Okay, so we are recording. So tonight's um, topic is going to be all about like what is a good sponsor, what makes a good sponsor. Um, we're not going to be sponsor bashing tonight. Okay, so just keep that in mind that if you, um, I wanted to sort of answer some different questions about like what you think your sponsor maybe should be doing. Um, or shouldn't be doing, right? We've, um, many of us have had either good or bad experiences with our uplines. Um, what you should be doing as a sponsor. So when you're, you, <laughs> wow, I'm having uh, English trouble tonight, apparently. When you are building your team and when you are sponsoring new people, what a good sponsor looks like um, as far as that goes. And just some tips on like, just sponsoring in general, okay? So when I'm using the word sponsoring, I am not talking about recruiting, okay? Recruiting is recruiting. Recruiting is onboarding new people, like bringing people onto your team. Sponsoring is the actual act, um, like the verb <laughs> of that, okay? So once they join your team, sponsoring begins, okay? So that's what I'm talking about. As you guys know, um, the rules for my meetings are there are no rules, okay? So if you ever need to unmute yourself and ask a question or, or if you have a tip to add, um, please do so, okay? I am not the queen of all experts here. So just let's um, have a conversation if you guys want to add anything, okay? So first things first, a sponsor or a great sponsor uh, leads from the front. And what I mean by that is, they set the example, they do the things they tell their teams to do. So the, all the things that you want your teams to be doing, you need to be doing first and you need to be doing consistently, okay? There's nothing worse than hearing from someone who is in um, a position of authority or a position of influence telling you to do something you know they are not doing themselves right? Like, isn't it the worst when you had like parents growing up or even like that one boss who was leaning against the desk telling you, do you need to go clean stuff? <laughs> you know, like that was always the worst thing. And the same thing goes in our industry, guys. Okay. So if you want your teams um, to be having higher sales, like you wish your GWV was higher, if you wanted your teams to be recruiting more consistently, because you wish like more people were bringing um, teammates on more consistently, if you wish your team showed up to more of these types of things or um, SFR or world tours, if you wish your teams were earning incentives and awards, you need to be doing those things first, okay? Um, this statistic was true a few years ago. I haven't like looked into it to see if it still kind of stands, but it's still a good rule to live by. And I do find that it is typically true. Your teams will do about 50% of what you're doing. That's obviously not always true, okay? We have downlines who like outshoot us in sales every month and that kind of stuff, right? Like if we're lucky, but typically your team will do about 50% of what you're doing. So look at your own recruiting conversations right now. Look at your own sales right now. Ask yourself if you would be stoked if your team did half of that, okay? So a good sponsor leads from the front. Uh, we say things like a good, like be the engine, right? Like I said that before, hashtag be the engine. And that's just what that means. It doesn't mean like be the one in front, like a peacock and showing off your stuff. It just means like literally do the shitty shit that you want your team to do. Okay. So um, a great sponsor recognizes and or rewards behavior they want repeated. Okay. The re the behavior that you want repeated also happens to be the behavior that is best for the, your team, <laughs> right? You don't want to uh, you don't want them repeating behavior that is no good for them, obviously. So the behavior that is good for them is good for you. It's good for the whole team. Okay, so that could be looking or that could look like just straight up encouragement. Okay, um, encouraging and being just a cheerleader is appropriate when you are a sponsor, okay? Like be be their number one fan. Um, cheer them on whenever they do anything that you know is good for them, okay? That could even look like, girlfriend, I saw that you worked out today. So proud of you, <laughs> okay? Uh, because your people need to be taking care of themselves first or else their business fails anyways, okay? Um, so there's a couple different kinds of behavior that we want to sort of recognize, okay? Um, one is results. That's going to be the easiest kind of behavior um, 
to recognize as a sponsor because you can literally look in your downline report and see the numbers staring back at you, okay? So results might be uh, recruiting, sales, consistency of any kind. So consistency of sales, consistency of recruiting, that kind of stuff. Um, promotions, obviously, earning incentives, that kind of stuff, right? Those are the things you can literally see in your downline report. You absolutely want to recognize um, those behaviors. The harder thing to recognize as a sponsor is actual effort-based. So things like being brave, right? Going live for the first time. If you saw someone going out of their comfort zone, um, what else are some other things that could be effort-based, you guys? What else have you been shouted out for before, for your efforts that you appreciated? What about just having conversations? Like, have you ever had anyone like cheer you on for that kind of stuff? Because that feels really good. So here's the thing, you guys, the effort-based behaviors lead to the, yeah, patience. So the effort-based behaviors lead to the results that you want, right? So if you are recognizing people and you're cheerleading them for actually taking the action they're going to want to take that action over and over and over again. And what happens when we take action over and over and over again, we get the results eventually. What you, I was th thinking what you could do. Another thing is, is just sometimes just them showing up. Yes. If they're just having a bad day. That's right. Absolutely. You so know, good. yep. like sometimes some people just showing up if they, if you know that they have, like if you have a relationship with them already, you're going to have, you're going to know if they've got some type of life issues or personal things and them just being present and you acknowledging their presence is sometimes that's all they need. Yeah. And it's sometimes all we can give, right? You guys. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes even just being here is yeah. all we can give right now. Yeah. So, and yeah. that's, the yeah, that's a really good point. So, um, Something that I like to recognize for, I actually haven't done in a while, and like <laughs> this training is sort of being like, oh yeah, I need to do that again soon. Um, and it goes with what Sabrina just said, is um, engagement in the team page, because that tells me that people are showing up, right, in that same sense. So um, being involved, engaged, cheering other people on, clapping when other people win, that kind of stuff, okay? Um, yeah, thank you, Sabrina, really good point. Okay, recognition, you guys, doesn't have to be expensive. It actually doesn't have to cost you anything. Don't um, conflate <clears throat> recognition for actual gifts, prizes, and rewards, okay? The reward itself is the recognition. If you want to go above and beyond that, and if that's within your means, um, by all means, do that. My biggest tip as far as that goes, though, is to make sure it is scalable, Okay, don't do for one what you can't do for a hundred or a thousand. If you are going to be consistent in this business and you are going to do the things <laughs> that we are talking about here and you know everywhere else that you learn consistently, eventually you will have a team in the thousands. Don't be spending, like don't send your one teammate because it's only one teammate, a whiff box for being active this month. Because what happens when you have 400 people active <laughs> eventually? right? You're going to be broke, bitch. That's what's going to happen, okay? So just make sure that whatever you are doing is scalable, okay? Um, now, some ideas for recognition, just plain shutouts. That's my favorite kind. It is free, and it builds upon itself because when you shout someone out, hopefully um, the other people in the team page or wherever it is clap when other people win, and they um, help feel, like they help encourage that person, okay? So team page shout outs, personal page shout outs. I would probably check and ask your teammate if they feel comfortable with that, but you could totally post like in your stories um, or on their wall or on your wall and tag them. Um, Teresa Wallery just hit uh, level one of the incentive a couple days ago, like, yes, Teresa. So I, post, I posted it in my stories and I did like a funny little like twerking gift beside it. Um, but I know that she would be like, cool with that. So that could be something like so social media shout outs, either within the team page or personal pages. 
Um, private texts, that actually is more powerful than it sounds. I have been doing a frontline focus system for the last year and a bit, um, which involves me personally texting my frontline. Um, and I find something to incur or to um, sort of shout them out for almost every single month. Sometimes it is just to check in, like Sabrina said. Sometimes it's just like, hey girl, you haven't had peer review in a couple months. I'm not worried about that, but I'm worried about you. I wanna make sure you're okay. I'm, I'm close with Carol Ann. She's been on my team forever. She literally just battled cancer. So I would more often than not check in with her to see how chemo was doing, see how her treatment was that day. Just see how she was feeling with having a thousand children while she's battling cancer. <laughs> Right? That's not easy. So I usually checked in more often with her, like just to see how she was. Then I did, like, I usually didn't even mention her business because <laughs> that wasn't the priority. Um, but when I did, when I do text people, hey, you've been active for three months in a row. I just want you to know that that's actually amazing. A personal text really shows them that you're thinking about them specifically. So that can really go a long way. Um, and of course, the all beloved happy mail. Okay, I'm just going to encourage you once again, if you are sending happy mail, make sure it is scalable. My happy mail includes typically just a postcard or a handwritten thank you card, or not thank you card, <laughs> handwritten card. Um, lately, I've been adding a few other very small, very thin, very light business supplies in with it. Okay, so someone who, for example, who was active for three months in a row, um, like up until April, I sent her a little um, postcard just saying like, oh my God, this is what you, like, this is why you're getting this package. I'm so proud of you. I sent them literally one of the sheets of the fragrance stickers, like one sheet, guys, not a package, a sheet, okay? And I think one sheet of the joint stickers. That's it. Just a very like small little um, business supply happy mail. Again, it wasn't about me like spending the money because like I hope that that's not what they're expecting because it was cheap <laughs> to send, but it was more just a little uh, recognition of their achievement. Okay. Um, a great sponsor reaches down and offers coaching opportunities when the person wants it. I'll get into that later. Um, and then teaches their frontline to duplicate that. Okay. So in order to teach um, how to do what you're doing, you need to know what you're doing and how you're doing it. This was a lesson that took me literal years to sort of wrap my head around. I would build leaders and I would coach frontline and I would do all the things. Um, but if someone asked me like what I was doing in order to get those results, I would have no answer for them. I wouldn't even know what to say. So I've literally had to like be like, okay, I need to figure out what I'm doing and I need to do the same thing over and over and over again so I can teach someone how to do it. And the easiest way to do that, you guys, is getting a system. Don't freak out if you're not a type A, neither am I, um, and checklists. Okay, so when you onboard someone, what is the thing that you do every time someone joins your team? That's a system. Okay, if you have a new consultant checklist that you follow, like, okay, did I talk to them about their shooting star? Did I tell them that they should go live when they unbox their kit? When is their 15th day? Do we, you know, like if you have a little checklist that tells you um, the different sort of talking points, then you can literal, and you don't have to make this up, you guys. Um, I think there actually is one on the workstation. And if not, I will, someone remind me, please, because you guys know I will forget. Um, I will link it to the pages. There was something I was supposed to link last week and I just realized I didn't. So someone please remind me about all these things. Um, but if you are doing the same thing each time something happens, that is a system. And if you are doing that with your frontline, as far as your coaching um, and training opportunities go, you could literally take that same thing that you're doing and give it to your frontline and say, go do this with your frontline now. That's what duplication is, okay? Um, so keep it simple enough so that your frontline looks at you and says, I could do that too. I could do what she's doing. Like what she's doing with me right now, I could do that with the next person. That's what you, that's your goal for your coaching opportunities. Um, I can't remember if I talked to you guys on here or just on the team page. My coaching program that I spent a million hours creating, um, I've had maybe three people in the last like three years actually sign up to it. 
uh, because the entire process in order to get to me, in order to have a coaching call with me was so freaking complicated and long and no one wanted to do it. And to be honest, I didn't even want to even go through that process. I didn't want to look at your 18 questions that I just forced you to answer. Like, I, so if it's too complicated, no one is going to want to take part. Okay. So now my coaching opportunities looks like, Hey, who wants to have a 50 minute call with me? Um, I'm open this day, this day, this day. Megan goes, yeah, that sounds great. How about tomorrow at one? I go, cool. And then we FaceTime tomorrow at one and we talk about whatever she needs to talk about. And I'm going to hopefully if I can shut my mouth for four seconds, let her talk more. And I'm going to ask her questions about what she's stuck on and let her come up with the ideas that I know she already has in her head. I just need to coax them out. Okay. That's what coaching is. So don't overcomplicate that. Like I did. <laughs> okay. Don't do it. Kate did guys. That's, your, that's like the rule, the weekly rule of huddle up. Um, so great sponsors make team members want our jobs. Right. So I sort of just said that a minute ago too. like, if they look at you and say, I can do that. Um, that's what you want. If they look at your whole job and say, I can do that. And I want to do that. Then you're doing the right thing. I haven't always done this. Right. Okay. I have been a bad sponsor. I have been a good sponsor. I have done too much. I have done too little. Um, I have been a grouchy, bitchy, resentful <laughs> sponsor sometimes. It's taking me a long time to get to where I am right now. So my goal of tonight is to like fast track you guys here <laughs> and skip by, um, by all of that grouchy stuff, okay? So one, boundaries are necessary for your um, sanity. Okay. And to make other people look at you and want your job. If you are answering their texts at 11 PM, do you think they want to build a team so that their personal space is invaded 24 hours a day? Hell to the freaking no, right? Make them want your job. So set boundaries. A good rule of thumb is a 24 hour rule. If that person is not within their 15 days. Okay, so if they are um, brand new, I spend a lot more time with them um, than other people. And that's because time is of the essence, right? So if they have a question about their launch party, um, I am going to do my best to answer it right away. That still does not mean I am answering them past my bedtime. Okay, at my bedtime, which just, I don't have a bedtime, but when, when I go to bed and I'm deciding to clock out, I literally put my phone on silent and I turn it upside down. So I don't see notifications. I don't hear notifications. I don't see the little red thing telling me that someone needs me, okay? Um, I don't answer anybody's crap after I decide I've clocked out. And I don't answer anybody's crap before I've had my first cup of coffee either. <laughs> so that's like a non-negotiable for me now. Um, and that's not because I can't think before my first cup of coffee, which is true, but that's not why I do it. Um, it's because I need to wake up slow in order to be my best self. So I do other things for myself first. Sometimes it's um, checking emails just to sort of like, you know, clear up my inbox a little bit. Sometimes it's literally playing like balls and bricks on my phone just to like zone into my day. Okay. It just depends on my mood. Um, once I've had that first cup of coffee, then I will start actually interacting with other humans because I'm ready. Can, oh, I thought Sabrina couldn't hear me. Okay. Um, so great sponsors are not available 24 seven. Okay. Um, great sponsors teach other people to fish. And this is within make other people want your job. Um, if you are answering them constantly, even though their answer can be found very easily, no one wants to do that with other people either. Okay, even if they're doing that to you just because they're not aware, if you're constantly answering their questions, they're going to look at you and go, oh God, building a team means I have to answer a million questions a day. So make sure that you are teaching them to fish. Again, if they are new because it's time sensitive, I'm just gonna give them the answer, but I'm also going to like tell them where to find it in the future. Um, if they're not new and you guys are on my team page, you know this, I it's like a rule in my team page to not give the answer. So if the answer can be found on the workstation, 
we tell them where to find it instead. So that's what a great sponsor does. You tell them where to find it. We are independent consultants. So it's your job as a sponsor to, to sort of raise them into strong independent consultants and to be depend, independent of you um, as fast as possible, right? And as efficiently as possible and effectively as possible. So if they're constantly dependent on you, you're actually not doing them a favor. You're doing them a disservice by not teaching them to um, go do the work, okay? Um, and yeah, so this sort of goes along with everything else I just said, but a great sponsor respects their own time, like your time, okay? And that's just all of that about making people want your job. Um, basically, if you're having fun, you guys, if you're enjoying leadership, if you're having a great time, if you're enjoying the lifestyle that leadership allows you to have, like AKA paychecks, you guys see the income disclosure, um, they're going to want to be where you are. If you are grouchy about people not interacting on your team page, hi, I've been there. I've literally called people out for not interacting on my team page. Ugh. Like it's so cringy, but I've done it. So if you're grouchy about that, if you're annoyed that people like aren't helping you do things, if you are tired and exhausted because you're answering questions at 11 p.m., or if you're pissed off about the way that the last launch went and you're gonna grouchy um, like vent about that on the team page, no one wants your job. No one wants to be a leader if it looks like it sucks. Okay. And I know that seems really like obvious, but it's not always obvious um, when you're in the moment. And I'm not talking about go be fake and go suppress all your feelings, <laughs> go scream into your pillow and then act like sunshines and rainbows in the team page. No, I'm telling you to literally actually enjoy your job right? Like leadership should be fun. So if you're not having fun, you need to figure out why you need to do some little like deep diving into your personal growth. Okay. Um, and you will have more fun, by the way, when you do all of that other stuff, like respect your time, right? And like teach them to fish and um, have actual boundaries and stuff like that. So a sponsor is there. And we sort of talked about this a couple weeks ago after we stopped recording. Um, but a sponsor is there to serve, not to be served. So that just means you're there to help them reach their goals, whether they're big or small. Okay, they are not there to help you hit numbers. They're not there to be active so that you can be paid a title. They are not there to certify as quickly as possible so that you can earn an incentive. Um, it is not our team's responsibility to help us hit those things. They don't owe us their PRV, okay? Um, and I'm not saying that anybody thinks like that, like actually thinks like that, but sometimes it can be really frustrating. And this is where this conversation stemmed from a few weeks ago, was when we pour into them and they're not like showing up. And you're like, oh, like, first of all, what am I doing wrong? And second of all, this bitch said she was going to be active this month. Where is she? <laughs> right? So it's not like an intentional, like, my team needs to be here for me. But when you have it in your head that that isn't their, their role, then it's easier to sort of go, oh, yeah, okay, woo, right? To sort of like be calm about that. Um, so if we want more active frontline, we want higher GWV, right? We want more people building their teams. We want more business owners on our team. That is on us to go and recruit more people, okay? So it is our job to um, serve them wherever they are at, when they are at it, <laughs> okay? Um, so if someone joins your team and immediately says, I'm here for the personal discount, I will be active in November, when I buy Christmas gifts. And then I will be active next November when I buy Christmas gifts. It is not your role to say, okay, but what happens if you just go for your shooting star? Like maybe you'll like it. Nope. Nope. You're, you're not going to push on anything that they don't want to do. Okay. So if they have told you expressly what their wishes are, what they're here for, um, your job is to respect that and support them in that where they are. That doesn't mean like peace out, remove them from your team page 
and ignore them because you hate them because they're not going to be active. <laughs> um, you're still going to support them in whatever way they need. Okay, so I typically reach out to my um, hobbyists every couple months just to be like, hey, how's it going? Sometimes I even treat my hobbyists like VIP customers, like legit. I text them and I'm like, oh my God, girl, did you see the specials this month? Like, bomb. And sometimes they put it in order because me texting them reminded them to go check what the specials were. And sometimes they ignore me and that's totally fine because they don't want like my mentoring, right? And that's again, totally fine. It's not about me, it's about them. Um, so respecting where they are and yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll, I was going to say something, but it sort of goes into my next point. Anyways, a great sponsor matches energy. And I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago too, like post recording. Don't give more energy to someone's business than they give to their own business. This is a huge, huge role, a uh, not role, um, rule. And it's a huge, huge lesson that is really hard to learn. <laughs> especially when someone has potential and you know that potential. Um, I've had literal people, you guys, and I'm not going to say names, obviously, who have had, who have given up teams so massive because they just weren't willing to do the work. You know how hard that is as a sponsor, as a sponsor to be like, you have a team of 40. You just have to be active. You have to be active. And they just didn't want to. So they let their teams roll up to me, right? That person could have been a director very easily. The potential of someone is really hard, um, but potential means nothing if they don't want it, right? Um, who who heard in high school, oh, you, you just have so much potential. Was anyone else like kind of a badass in high school? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So my teacher said that to me all the time. Oh, Katie, your, your potential is so great. We see such great things in your future. You know what it made me want to do? Skip school, go smoke in the alley, which I did. Um, so it literally just, yeah, <laughs> Carol Ann. Yeah. Woo. Um, it literally pushes them away and it does the same thing with our teammates too. Okay. So don't spend energy chasing people. No response is a response. I want you to hear that. No response is a response. If you are trying to reach out to someone because whatever, right? If they put in their 500 PRV, they could get paid a title this month and they don't reply to you, that is a response. Don't chase them. You cannot want it more than they do, okay? Like I said in the last one, it is our jobs to serve them, okay? So it is our job to uh, offer the support. It is not our job to make them take it, <laughs> okay? Offer the support, whether they take it or not, is not on your lap. It is not on your shoulders, all right? Um, so no response is a response. No effort is also a response. No effort is a signal. If someone tells you, and this is even harder than no response, you guys, if someone responds to you and says they're gonna do all the things and then you don't see them doing any of the things, that's a response, that's a signal to you, okay? Again, this doesn't mean hold a resentment. It doesn't mean kick them off your team page or like secretly hate them. It literally just means that they don't want whatever it is out of their business that you want for them, okay? Um, you could be spending that time with people who deserve that energy. And by deserve, I mean, they're matching your energy, okay? I'm not talking about people as like value systems, okay? Everyone is valuable as they are, yada, yada, yada. I'm talking about deserving as far as energy goes, okay? You could be spending time with people that deserve your time, or you could be spending um, that time finding new people who want this as a business or new people who deserve your time. Or here's the best part. You could be spending that time with your freaking families, right? <laughs> Taking some time off. Value your time. Do not chase people when you could be doing something else instead. All right. Um, 
great. Oh, I just already said that about great potential is nothing without that person's interest. Um, and guys, so there's two parts to this, right? About not chasing people. One, it's it's better for your own mental health. It's better for your sanity. You don't want to end up resenting your team. But also, two, you're going to push those people away if you want more for their business than they want themselves. This goes for people who join for um, hobbyist reasons, maybe. But the harder part about it, or um, the harder scenario you're going to find with this, is people who start out like a firecracker, right? And they like maybe build teams and all of the things, and then all of a sudden they just stop. Their effort stops. Um, whether or not they're like battling cancer or like Sabrina said, just going through something hard, having a hard time in life, or they just change their mind. They're allowed to do that. <laughs> okay. They don't owe us anything. They are allowed to do that. Um, again, it is our job to serve them with love, which means stepping back when they've given you clear signals that it's time to step back. Okay. Um, a couple just general things. Let me make sure I'm not like forgetting anything else here. Um, everything that you do as a sponsor is a learned skill. Everything you do in this business is a learned skill, including confidence. You don't do confidence, but you know what I mean? It's something that you learn, okay? It's not something that people are naturally born with. Leadership is a learned skill. Sabrina, you're making me jealous. Just saying. <laughs> um, it's my birthday. Right now? Happy birthday, Sabrina. My daughter made me a cake for my birthday, so she's been patiently waiting for me to cut my birthday cake. <laughs> well, why didn't we blow out candles and sing to you and shit? <laughs> we missed out on a great opportunity. <laughs> I thought okay. you needed a cake. I thought you were just having cake. No, the Thursday. She, no, oh. she made me my birthday cake. So she made it in chocolate icing and sprinkles. So that's why I'm having cake. Sorry, guys. That, don't be sorry. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> oh well, happy birthday, Sabrina. Um, Thank you. So <laughs> I was just teasing you, but I'm glad that I did because we wouldn't have known that. So everything that I'm talking about is, and when I say it's a learned skill. What do skills need, you guys? Anybody? I'm gonna take a sip of water actually because I'm really thirsty. What do skills need to grow? Practice. Yeah. And you can't practice a skill in theory, okay? <laughs> you can't learn about sponsoring so much that you're going to be a great sponsor. That's never going to happen. You need to actually do the things in order to sort of build that muscle. Okay. It's like working out. And I talk about this all the time with you guys, right? Like the comparison of our businesses to like a healthy lifestyle, for instance, I can't go and read a thousand pages about what um, crunches look like, and then look down and have a six pack, right? I need to actually do the crunches, <laughs> even if it's hard. And even if I suck at first, and even if my back hurts, because I'm not doing it right, right? Um, it's the same thing with anything in our business. You can't read or learn about something so much that you just end up absorbing those skills. Yes, will learning the theory help you? develop the skills as you're practicing them of course right that's why you guys show up to these things that's why i literally do some kind of development every single day in my business but you need to actually do the things which means if you want to be a good sponsor you need to sponsor people all the time over and over and over again and then you need to um put these things into practice. You need to actually go tell someone where the answer is instead of telling them what the answer is. Cause guess what? That's harder, <laughs> right? Telling them where they can find it is uncomfortable. And sometimes they even get like a little angry with you which makes it a really hard thing. 
where you know if you just told them what the answer is, it would have taken you four seconds. It's like raising toddlers, right? If you teach them the right way, it's going to take 400 hours. If you just tie their shoes for them, you'll get out the door in three seconds, right? But like you want to eventually like you want that little person you're raising to eventually be able to tie their shoes when they're going to college, which means you need to tell, like, show them how to do it. Um, so everything that we're doing here is a learned skill. Okay, so you just need to do the things and you need to do them over and over and over again. Like I mentioned, I've sponsored, what did I say the other day, you guys, in my Team Over the Rainbow Live? I've sponsored, I don't know, 130 people, I think it was, about. It's my first two years, I, can, I don't even have access to. So I've sponsored about 130 people and that doesn't include reinstatements. Um, it took me probably until 100 in to really figure out what I was doing, to be totally honest. Like to really get into the groove, to really find the confidence, um, which and I, I'm not saying I was like a shit leader for those first 100 people. Right. Um, but I didn't feel like a confident, I didn't feel like a great sponsor until fairly recently. Um, so it's a learned skill. Now, a couple just sort of general things, and then I'll open up for a little bit of discussion and then I'm going to let you guys go. Okay. Cause I don't want this to be like a 10 o'clock meeting <laughs> like it has been the last couple of weeks. So, um, a sponsor, and this sort of goes into what we were talking about before, but I really just sort of want to hammer this home. A sponsor is not responsible for a teammate's success. Okay, so if you have a bunch of teammates who have zeros as PRV today, or um, you have a teammate who didn't earn awards that they wanted to earn, or any of the things, any of whatever um, their definition of success is, okay, that is not on you. We are all independent consultants. We all have access to the same workstation, the same training materials, all the things, okay? When you, you guys, recently had any kind of success, whatever it may be, did your sponsor do that work for you? Did your sponsor hit those goals for you? Did your sponsor come over to your house and enter those orders into your workstation for you? Or did you do that? No, but she virtually beat me over the head and said, go do something. Yeah, she fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, in case you guys are wondering who's beating other people. It's me. A good sponsor really beats their, their teammates, <laughs> verbally abuses them until they work. That's what they do. Um, yeah, so a good sponsor coaches them into doing what they are doing, right? But it's on each person in order to do the things. So Carol Ann is referring to, she is hosting um, or like doing one of her first online parties ever, her first Facebook parties. And she's like, oh my God, it's actually so easy. And I'm actually getting really good results already. Like that was just a couple hours ago. I'm um, totally setting up the second one as we speak. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. So I am not there doing the thing she's doing right now, you guys. <laughs> her success is on her. I could have given her the information to do those parties and she could have just as easily not taken that information and ran with it, right? So each person's success is in their own hands. Um, same goes for their failures, okay? And I'm not talking about like, failure is such a trigger word for some people, but we'll just say failure, okay? Um, if someone fails at this job, if someone cancels because they couldn't go active in four months or now it's 12 months or whatever, um, that is not their sponsor's responsibility or fault. Okay. Um, when someone says, well, I didn't know how to do that when I first started because my sponsor dot, dot, dot. I literally don't want to hear it because you could have just opened up your workstation and checked for yourself. We all have the same consultant guide in our starter kit, <laughs> okay? Um, so a good sponsor or any sponsor is not responsible for a teammate's success or lack thereof. Um, like I said before, a sponsor is someone who offers support and then detaches from those results, okay? Like I said, we um, are there to support, we're there to love, we're there to serve. 
um, I think we actually talked about this a couple weeks ago too on the off recording, you guys. If you're so focused on their results when you're offering that support, it's going to build resentment. So what did I put here? Um, it's going to help you actually love like giving that support and love um, just being that person there for them, right? Giving the recognition, giving the support, coaching them. Da -da -da. You're going to find love and um, joy in that journey, like that part of your leadership, because you're not going to be looking for the payback, aka their results, <laughs> right? So if we are only offering that love on the condition that they give us their results, what's going to happen when their results don't come in that month or whatever, right? You're going to feel resentful um, about the time that you spent or about the promises that they didn't keep and all of that kind of stuff. If you literally offer the support and then detach yourself from the outcome, you're going to free yourself of all of that pressure and all of that resentment. I've talked about this even with recruiting you guys, right? It's our job to offer the opportunity, whether they take us up on that offer isn't even our business. <laughs> so detach yourself from people, whether they're about to say yes or no, it doesn't matter because it's not about us in the first place. It's about them, right? Offer the love, whether they take it or not is their prerogative and it has nothing to do with us. Um, and one other thing before I sort of wrap this up is a good sponsor sets realistic expectations. So like I talked about with the boundaries, let them know when you're not going to be available, right? Let them know what you expect of them. So if you want my, um, my coaching, here's what I expect from you. And it might just be energy. It might just be like energy as far as um, you not wanting their success more than they do, that kind of stuff. You can say that. You can set those expectations, right? You can say, I'm not going to be meeting with you weekly and spending two and a half hours on a coaching call. That's not realistic, especially if you're not going to do the things you say you're going to do. That's setting a boundary and that's setting an expectation. Setting expectations might also look like if you want results, you have to do the work right? If you want the abs, you have to do the crunches. <laughs> you can't just say, I know, <laughs> exactly. I don't want them that bad. You can't just say you want the results and then not actually take action over and over and over again, because I am going to eventually give my energy to someone who's ready to accept that energy and bounce it back at me. And when you're ready to do that, I'm, I'll be here for you, right? That's an expectation. Letting them know, um, how much work this business actually takes in order to see results. How many conversations does someone actually need to have before someone joins their team? A lot like setting expectations right up from the beginning, not only protects you and your boundaries and your heart and your energy and your time, it allows them to actually be more successful. I've said it before, typically, the reason someone um, gives up or quits or um, thinks they suck is literally because they're not taking enough action. They're not doing enough work. They might be working really, really hard at the wrong things. Um, or they might think that having 10 conversations every two months is enough. So then when they're doing that and they're not seeing the results that they think they should be getting, they automatically make it about the fact that they're not good enough or they're not cut out for this or um, this business doesn't work. So you're not doing anybody any favors by, I'm not lying to them, obviously don't lie to them, but you're not doing anybody any favors by withholding the real truth, which is if these are the results you want, this is the work you have to do, right? So like being the cheerleader, like I talked about earlier is really important but also being the coach on the sidelines and giving the like loving them enough to tell them the truth is just as important. And I've talked about that with my team before too. Like, yes, I am a cheerleader for when it matters. If you guys do things that you're proud of, um, kitty kitty, 
I will cheer you on and I will be the loudest person like with the pom poms for sure. But I'm also going to love you enough to tell you how it is because I really don't think that like it's helpful to withhold any of that stuff back, even if it might piss the people off or a couple people off along the way, which if you've known me for more than five seconds, you know that I've probably done, right? Um, but that's just the what I'm willing to do in order to make sure that those who are listening um, are hearing the real truth. So that's that. And now that Caroline like makes, it makes me like sleepy looking at the little kitty cat. So I'm gonna stop the recording. Um, and then if you guys, bye YouTube.